tonight, isn't it? That'll be the script. <laughs> Fancy a game of snap, eh? Pass the time. I shout snap, you take all your clothes off, eh? <laughs> Another one. Uh, are you all right? Pretend landlord Bob, sir. I would like to talk to you about my wages for being a pretend barmaid. And what wages would those be, pretend barmaids, Jessa? Exactly. What do you mean, exactly? I don't get any wages for being a pretend barmaid and I would like some. Ah, uh, don't be silly, Shazam. I mean, that's the whole point, isn't it? You're only pretending to be a barmaid. Hmm? I mean, really, you're not a barmaid at all. You're an actress. <laughs> you could paid for doing that. I still have to clean the bloody glasses, though, don't I? <laughs> you get to be so jolly and bonimous. The rest sit around all day and I sweep the floor. So you not only want your wages as an actress, but you also want pain as a barmaid as well. That is exactly it, and I am not doing any more of this totem, lift nor humphing until I get paid. And supposing you had to play Margaret Thatcher in a film, would you expect a Prime Minister's salary? I would if I had to make all the laws, run the country, and then sweep out my own dispatch boxes. Hmm. Well, Shazza, I wonder if we might discuss this later. Like when we're not in front of an audience. Of course we're not going to discuss it later. There'd be no point. Nobody would care. Well, it's beyond me now. I shall have to phone Mr. Granada and see if he has any suggestions. <laughs> Obviously, comrades, I'm deeply sorry that the innocent are going to have to suffer through this, but I have to do it now because it's the only way to get my message across. Oh, splendid. Carry on. Bless my lordy, there's a hell of a theatrical effect going on out there. Good <laughs> evening, Lord Stater. Good evening to you, Tim Landlord Bobson. Just give my togs a brush down like a splendid before all this uh, polystyrene melts, would you, my Bobson British serving with? Brush your own coat, gungy face. Splendid. Carry on, and I'll take a look. Uh, Shizza, um, we're on page 36. Ah, uh, you might be, but I'm not. <laughs> Shizza, I know you went to a very cheap drama school run by a lot of lefty Scots, but nonetheless... I am on strike, so you can find yourself a new tucky. Points their legs. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I've, uh, I've had a word with Mr. Granada, who is not only head of this company but also knew the Beatles, and he's given me two options. Either he'll lend you a tenner till next Tuesday, or, and I think this is the most attractive offer, he'll give you a job on one of the motorway service stations. Otherwise, he'll have to refer up to Dr. Network. <laughs> the strike goes on. <laughs> know something, pretend landlord Bobza. Mm. I shouldn't be in the least bit surprised if this strike isn't resolved until the very end of the show. Mm. <laughs> oh, do come quickly, officer. There's been a robbery in Fisher Street. Hello? Hello. Yes, it happened just a few minutes ago. <laughs> in fact, they can't have got very far. You could probably catch them if you go now. Aren't you going to do something? Hello. What? Je comprends pas. Look, there has been a robbery. Robbery. Yes, thieves have got away with ah. a... <laughs> Look, you are a policeman, aren't you? Police? We oui, easy police. Yes. Well, then, there has been robbery. a robbery. Robbery. Yes, some men have stolen Ro a very large... <laughs> Look, do you understand what I'm saying? Come on. Do you speak English? English, no. No, je suis français. French. French, we read French. Well, can I speak to someone English? Come on. Can I speak to someone English? Attendez. Terry, mm -hmm. viens ici. Il est en anglais. Oh, thank goodness. I've been trying to explain to this man, but he doesn't understand what I'm saying. There has been a robbery in Fisher Street. Alors, <laughs> qu'est-ce que tu as? Eh? Do you speak English? Oh, English! Sure, yeah, yeah! John Lennon, Bob Dylan! <laughs> hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me! Please! 
please. Uh, oh, message uh, in the bottle. <laughs> message in the bottle. Yeah. Right. If that isn't what I'm going to get, then you can just bloody well forget it. You can just forget it. Hello? Can I speak to Tosca, please? It's Helen. Yeah, his ex. Hello, Tosk. Yeah, listen, look, you came and got your stuff today, right? Well, look, did you take the speakers? Because, like, they've totally gone. <laughs> yeah, well, right, look, I think they're mine, OK? I mean, like, I paid for them. Yeah, I know the stereo's yours, but, I mean, you left that. But, I mean, it's not much good without the speakers, right? And they're mine. Well, hasn't she got any speakers? <laughs> Right, well, look, at some stage, right, somebody's going to have to buy a new set of speakers, right? Otherwise, like, this whole situation could go on for, like, ever. And at the end of it, someone's going to be left right with, like, a stereo and no speakers, which is a bummer. And at the moment, it looks like it's going to be me. <laughs> well, who's got her speakers? What do you mean, like, when he moved out, he took her speakers? Like, what's wrong with everybody? Can't you get them back and then you can give me mine? Can he give me hers then? <laughs> like you could give him ours. I mean yours, sorry. No, mine! My oh look, hang on, Toss, hang on, right? Because like this is turning into a really heavy possessions trip, okay? And like we agree, we agree. Oh. Oh, God, it. Did you take the plug? <laughs> the plug for the bath? Because like, I don't mind about the egg cups and the loofah, OK? But, like, the basin plug doesn't fit into the bath, right? And it doesn't work stuffing things down it, because I tried that years ago when Ziggy moved out. <laughs> of course, I still love you. OK, you, you can keep the speakers, Toss. You can keep them, all right? But on one condition, you bring back the phone. <laughs> Perhaps we should pay her ourselves. I mean, what would an adequate remuneration for a pretend barmaid be? Perhaps uh, 12 pounds divided amongst the five of us? That would be, um... Two pounds 40 each! Yes, yes. Well, I mean, for two pounds 40, I could have myself a brand new ballpoint pen. <laughs> Quite a good one at that. Just an idea, has it? Couldn't we just have a put in prison? Now, there's an idea. Thank you. And what about the inalienable right of every person to withdraw their labour? People who abuse their rights don't just have to have any in the first place. Oh, I see. So she's abusing her inalienable right to withdraw her labour by withdrawing her labour, is that it? Yes, well, of course, as usual, you've got some clever, clever communistic reply. Just think yourself lucky you live in a country where you're allowed to make clever, clever communistic replies. You wouldn't be in Russia. Ah, <laughs> well, that's where you're wrong, Smarty Hazard, because clever, clever communistic replies are quite acceptable in Russia. In fact, they're encouraged. Listen. That was three and a half seconds. Fact. Every three and a half seconds in Russia, 18 million dissident novelists are shot. And that's <laughs> true. God, that upsets me. Is that the kind of world you want for your children? I haven't got any children. <coughs> oh. <laughs> You're just twisting words now, aren't you? It's pointless arguing if you can take that attitude. Look, that is not what... That is not what I meant at all. You completely missed my point. God, you're infuriating. All I was trying to say was, will you let me finish? I was merely trying to point out, please stop interrupting me and stop bloody shouting. No one ever won an argument by shouting. It's bloody stupid. I want to get out of this argument, but he won't let me. Look, it's not a big deal, but your original point was, everyone's bored with it, including me, but I'm trapped. The truth is, we're really both saying the same thing, but in different ways. Hmm. But the point is... No luck, I'm afraid. Servants have all gone home and the place is locked up. I mean we're locked in? Looks that way. Well, whoever he is, he certainly serves a damn fine glass of wine. When a chap buys me a drink, I like to see his face and know what's on his mind. But that's just the ruthless killing machine in me. 
So tell me, why did you come? Oh, I don't know. Something about the tone of his letter interested me. Uh, please meet me today at the Collingham Club at four o'clock or I'll blow up your house. <laughs> yes, mine was much the same. Timpson, by the way, Major, Blues and Royals. Billingsgate, Captain, Royal Green Jackets. Glad to know you, sir. Have a secret, sir. Ah! <laughs> I'm a retired school teacher. <laughs> Just like to travel. Uh, well, Cloak and dagger, aren't you, mate? So sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, our mysterious host at last. Well, I don't know about mysterious Billingsgate. Oh, yes. I know all your names. Colonel Susan Draycott, by the way. Now, <laughs> I expect you're anxious to know who this is about. <laughs> well, I don't know how you'd describe me. Some say I'm an adventurer. Some say I'm a fool. Personally, I like to think of myself as a gorgeous little fun bundle. Are there any questions? Well, what is this whole show about? So far, you've told us nothing. Now, I understand your impatience, Heffer. Gentlemen, it's been said of the 1980s that there are no great adventures left. No great deeds of daring exploration remain undone to challenge British pluck. Fellows, I say that that is rot. It's more than rot, it's tummy rubbish. There is one great challenge left. You're mad, sir! Bloody mad! It can't be done! What? Haven't you said it? <laughs> no, 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 but I'm sorry, sir. Fellas, what I propose is one of the most hazardous and dangerous enterprises a man can undertake. Uh, Billingsgate, pass me that map, would you? Sir, you are asking that man to commit suicide! No, still haven't seen the end. Sorry, sir. <laughs> All right. Now, gentlemen, what I propose is that we become the first men ever to cross the Antarctic barefoot with our legs tied together until we reach a point exactly three yards to the left of the South Pole. To the left side? You are mad. Whoa. Damn it, Colonel, I'm beginning to see what you mean. All right, it's, it's a crazy harebrained scheme. Granted, it's an idiotic, suicidal waste of time. Maybe it is the most fatuous pile of cretinous drivel anyone has ever spouted. Fair enough. Certainly, history may brand us unintelligent, unimaginative imbeciles. All right, so some people might say that we're the most stupendously self-indulgent dickheads in living memory. But by golly, I'm gay. Good man! Now, gentlemen, this expedition is not a bullet gate. It's an expedition. There's no absolutely <coughs> point barging in half cock and coming back with our trousers on fire. I propose that we spend the whole afternoon planning and don't even think of leaving off till tea time. Well, I might make one final suggestion, sir. Speak of peace, man. Well, as you know, I've had plenty of experience of this type of expedition before. And although it's going to sound absolutely crazy, my plan would be not to go. <laughs> what do you mean, just... Fall off the whole project before we've started? I know it's never been done before, sir. That's what makes it so bloody exciting. <laughs> I don't know about you chaps, but I'm game. Quite right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. That's settled. We'll just call it off. Forget about it. Jack the whole project in. It's been All right. Sorry to have wasted your time, man. Bye-bye. <laughs> My golly, Tipper, this is fun. Yeah, I must say I couldn't wait to get away. I must have left Henry Lump grub in the freezer for a year. <laughs> you know, I said to me, look, darling, just defrost something and pop it in the oven. Yeah. You know what he said? Where's the oven? <laughs> no, it's so sweet. Aren't they puppets? Honestly, Henry was absolutely fascinated when he saw the kitchen. He honestly had never been in there before, and I think he was quite taken with it. Oh. <laughs> They're my gorgeous, darling children, aren't they? Yes. Of course, I have this simply wonderful woman who comes in and does. Uh, I don't know what I'd do without her. another, I suppose. Very <laughs> good. My Mrs. Mop's an absolute treasure. You know, she's 87, but she works like a black man. And I say to her, Mrs. Mop, I say, I call her Mrs. Mop because I can never remember her name. Mrs. Mop, I say, you're an absolute treasure, but she just says she's desperate for the money because her husband's paralyzed. Can't pay for <laughs> Well, I'm afraid Richard hates her. <laughs> this is because Stan, poor people. I must say, I'm not over keen. But you know, my 
young woman is awfully well oh yes do you know i find they often are i think their vicars make them wash oh. <laughs> still we're away from all that now yes it's pretty marvelous isn't it mm. tent looks a bit cramped yes <laughs> thank god we brought the mobile home mm. oh listen do you honestly think stanley will be comfortable in here oh good lord yes he'll be all right dogs are used to roughing it <laughs> <laughs> You bloody communists. I beg your pardon, officer? You bloody communist, traitorous, lesbian anarchists. I'm sorry, officer? And well, you might be. You'll be a blooming sight sorrier after your friends the Russians have raped your mums and nicked your credit cards. Oh, I understand. You think we're peace women, don't you? What women? Peace women. Oh, Lord. Well, if you aren't, why are you camping by that missile? <laughs> That's ours, officer. Yes. We brought it with us. You see, we're inviting women from all walks of life who can afford a cruise missile oh, to join us in setting up a women's war base. Super idea, don't you think? Makes you proud, doesn't it? <laughs> Dear old ducky, you do look a treat in them threads, young Ezra. Oh, this is a terrifically unsmelly pretend landlord, Bobza. Just like in the general strike when the rich people drove the buses. I'll work behind the bar until Shizzer comes to her senses and realises that we're all British, rich or poor. Get that scab out of here! Shizzer, when did you go to school? I'm sorry, young Shizzer. The pretend bar must be run. I am bringing in a black leg. Bobza, where are your manners? Well, she won't get past the picket line. I am not a scab. Or a blackhead. I've got beautiful skin. Follow me, young Ezra, but keep your distance. This is man's work. Yes, hit her, hit her. Pretend I'm not part of any. Don't break any of the glasses. You shall not pass. Yes, watch me. Uh, uh, uh. There's no need for violence, pretend landlord Bobza, because as I've just discovered, Shizzer is legally obliged to go back to work. What do you mean? It's Tebbit's law, Shizzer. Forbids striking in essential industries. No, I don't think he, even a hardened, cynical Bolshevik like Shizzer could deny that the most essential element in running a pretend pub is a pretend barmaid. Tebbit's law. Right then, I suppose I'll have to see you lot in court. <laughs> ah, Mr Partridge, please don't get up. You won't mind if I stand. I hope I've got rather a sore bottom. No, no, please. Oh! Keep forgetting. Now, Mr. Partridge, if you had a little look, a probe, so to speak, and you'll be relieved to know that your left foot is fine. Good. Yes, you can look yourself. There, you see? Not so much as a veruca. Yes, but isn't it supposed to be on the end of my leg? I think perhaps you'd better let me be the best judge of that, Mr. Partridge. <laughs> no, but isn't it, really? Sometimes, yes. Often. But in your case, we thought it best to amputate your left foot so that when you die, it might live. When I die, Doctor? No, it's Octa. Actually, I dropped the D, considered it a frivolous affectation. Yes, but all the same. Oh, gosh, that is sore, isn't it? Very. Very sore. But to return to the subject of your death, Mr. Barbage. Look, if I divide this piece of paper into four, it represents the human heart. Now, what's happened in your case is this. <laughs> Octa. Octa de Quincy! How long do I have? Does your watch have a second hand? Octa! Yes, I'm afraid I give you less than one minute to live. But Mr. Partridge, die happy in the knowledge that your left leg will give the chance for a young child to laugh and skip and dance and be happy. It's size 12! <laughs> size 12, you say? Oh, in that case, do you think I could have your shoes after you're dead? <laughs> I have a splendid pair of lob brogues. Don't you think you're being rather callous, Octa? <laughs> all right, Mr. Partridge, I admit it, I was joking. I've been kidding you all the time. I haven't got a sore bottom at all. Look, see, perfectly all right. And I'm Doctor with a D, and this left foot isn't a foot at all. It's made entirely out of string. You <laughs> old dog, you. No, so you're still going to die, of course. <laughs> well, I was joking there as well. You're very seriously ill, but you'll live for a little while longer yet. You see, paradoxically, it's your lack of income that saved you. Private patients can die immediately. But there's a three-year waiting list on the NHS. <laughs> Well, we dragged this bloody huge, bloody great, bloody enormous rock 300 miles from the slate quarries and angles. See, now what do we do? We go and get another one. What? <laughs> That's not an enormous, great, bloody, huge, great, bloody rock. Why? So that we can worship it. 
We can worship it in the Slate Hills of Anglesey. Uh, it does seem a bit embarrassing, Oggy. I mean, it's not five minutes since the human race officially arose above the level of all other animals, and what's the first thing we do? We schlep some huge megalith all the way from, from Anglesey. Well, I mean, even fish don't bother with that kind of yeah, nonsense. Yeah, we're miles better than yeah. fish, aren't we? Yeah. Look, if I were to tell you that when we've got all 18 rocks in position... Oh, 18! <laughs> in position. The sun will rise at dawn and perfectly bisect the circle, creating an asymmetric tangent with the moon. Oh, oh that's different. Oh, yeah. What does an asymmetric tangent taste like? You don't eat an asymmetric tangent, you worship it. <laughs> Why can't we worship something else, like, you know, a stick or something? Oh, Aggie, what are you suggesting? Worship a stick? That is if it's simple, isn't it, <laughs> eh? I mean, even a fish could worship a stick. You wouldn't catch a fish. Lugging 15 tons of slate all the way from Anglesey, see that, would you? <laughs> and why? Because fish are stupid and we are the master race. <laughs> hey! That's right. Have your fun. There'll be plenty of time for laughing on the walk back to Anglesey. Here's a thought. Why don't we sacrifice Olgie instead of going and getting another 17? Yeah. Oh, I like it. There'd be no point. I'm not a virgin. <laughs> are we? That's not the way we do things, is it? Ah, well, <laughs> I've been meaning to say, you girls are going to have to start protecting your virtue so that we can worship it and so that the sun will rise tomorrow. That's the whole point of this thing, you see. We've got to, we've got to build the circle, worship the tangent, and constrict female freedom so that the sun will rise tomorrow. <laughs> The sun will rise tomorrow anyway. Well, can you be sure? You see, I know it will if you do what I say, but if you don't, well, then maybe it won't. Don't blame me if we're all plunged into eternal darkness. <laughs> Is he, do you think, uh, exploiting the natural superstition inherent in human nature? What is he doing? I hope you'll forgive me if I'm less than tolerably gorgeous for one or two moments, but as you can see, I have on my serious hat. <laughs> um, I've been asked by Mr. Granada and Dr. Network <laughs> to head this royal commission of inquiry into the recent terrible strike. The reason being that a lifetime of indescribable luxury and privilege leaves me well equipped to understand the grievances of the working classes and ethnic minorities. Three cheers for Lord Stezza. He's a right regular good un and worth 20 foreigners. This was a strike which no one wanted. I wanted it! A disastrous strike for the pretend pub and in particular the world famous British heavy industry of pretend barmaid. But I'm the only one! What the pretend barmaid Chizer Union has done by its action is to open the doors to hordes of Japanese and Korean pretend barmaids who will shortly swamp our pretend pubs. I think we all hardly need reminding that the Japanese already have the most efficient drama schools in the world, where acting is taught by laser. <laughs> who won the bloody war? That's what I like to know. I therefore have no alternative but to conclude that pretend barmaid Chizer is a traitor in the pay of Moscow and the Daily Mirror. <laughs> It'll all be tolerably gorgeous for just one or two moments more while I put on my even more serious hat. Even I sentence <laughs> pretend barmaid Chizer to um, death for striking. <laughs> so if there are no more. Oh. Well, it appears that perhaps my powers don't quite extend that far, so um, on this occasion, I'm inclined to be lenient and say no more about it. Uh, <laughs> Except, of course, to say that you're not going to get what you asked for, and you're extremely lucky to keep what you got in the first place. Now, do you have anything to say? I'm appealing! You certainly are, darling, which is why you're keeping your job. Ding, 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 boom! <laughs>